So I think there might have been something wrong with my camera in the last episode. So I'm going to start from scratch here and show you what I've built. And then I'll go back and talk about what, what I've and how I built it. <clears throat> so we'll start with uh, just what's in Arviz. And then we'll work our way back to, uh, you know, kind of what was used, created here. And I apologize, I have a slight cold, but uh, we're going to work through it. No big deal. So let's just go Arviz side by side. And here we have our joint state publisher GUI. What I'm going to do is just move the arms. There we go. You know that's the exciting stuff people want to see. So you want to see the robot moving. Super exciting. And let's talk about briefly what this robot is or, or where I got this robot from. And uh, we'll work our way back, back to the code eventually. So things move a little slowly when when I have uh, that running. So here's the open arm. This open arm is by a uh, company. Um, they're called Enactic. 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 Make sure I got that right. I think they're out of Japan. Um, and they basically created a leader follower arm setup uh, where the leader arm is for the most part unpowered or underpowered <coughs> and it also has little triggers allows you to um, close the grippers and I currently have a couple of these being built um, with my business partner in China so they're going to have some physical ones built up this is the, you know, kind of what it looks like. This is the breakdown of parts that go into the arm. Completely open source. Uh, the motors, the CAD, all this is available on their um, GitHub, which I'm going to show in a second. And then the idea is to start to gather imitation learning data, teleoperation data. They're using the RealSense camera. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I replaced it with uh, my own camera from Luxonis, and I really like their stereoscopic new um, uh, SDK, I think, version 3 that just came out. They just publicly uh, talked about it today. And then here you can put in your own, if you want to put in uh, your grippers with load cells or force sensors, you can put that in here as well. And easily replace these uh, grippers with other end effectors. Matter of fact, they have uh, types of end effectors listed, and you can add your type um, to that list or use the types they have available. And they also have the single arm configuration, the dual or bimanual arm configuration as well. Very well thought out, um, this group. So, build materials is about $6,500. That, you know, like I said, that group in China that I'm partnered with, they, are, uh, they have purchased that. And they have simulation tools available. Uh, and it's fully open source, so we're going to get into that in a second. And you can buy this kit or pre-build. What's interesting to me is, obviously, I, well, I'm a mechatronics engineer. I like just having a robot. I don't really, not really much on building them. So I usually push that off to other people. But you can see here, they have a simulator that runs in browser. You can kind of move the robot along in the browser. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and I'll stop simulator there. And then let's see it in action. And I'm actually going to have the actual physical robot next week. So we'll definitely see it in action then. That, that's the part that's interesting to me right there, that when they they plug something in, and that's actually ultimately why I ended up using this robot, was that the dexterity um, with, with the grippers, um, this, the, the, you know, obviously this, 
his motors are strong enough to allow the, the gripper to do such a thing with teleoperation. And the I idea with this robot is going to use it to do lots of things like plugging in different, different things, um, manipulating different surfaces, changing the end effector. Sorry, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> changing the end effector um, to something more like this. This is a, a linker bot uh, L20, I believe. And uh, so we'll be changing the end, end effector with a metal version of this uh, there. Lots of degrees of freedom, amazing uh, end effector. But the idea is we want to have the robot be able to do these things. You can see here, this is the, the uh, teleoperation path or where someone is actually there and manipulating this uh, sponge, cleaning up the table, and they can stand next to it as the robot's on this uh, extrusion. So that is the idea. A excellent uh, piece of work by this group. Um, and I've added, I've changed the cameras around so that this is Luxonis depth camera here. And I have actually placed two cameras on the grippers, as you can see in my, <clears throat> as you can see here, and I'll show them off uh, just briefly. So this is the, the perspective view. This is outside of the robot. I changed the camera to the color view of the RealSense camera here, left, right, you can see it kind of slightly shifted over, depth, left, RGBD, RGB, and right, that's the way the right's pointed right now, and you can see here it matches um, the robot in real time, real space. So this is running in Isaac Sim, the next step is to run this in Isaac Lab so that um, and then we start to get some real good telemetry from different operations. What we'll do is we'll um, make the rob robot go to certain positions, grab objects, etc. So step one was to go get this started in Isaac Sim. I'm using Isaac Sim 5.1 and uh, Isaac Lab, I think, 2.3. So that's the, the robot. I think it's an amazing robot. Um, let's let's go to the the uh, GitHub repo, and then there's an active Discord as well. And here's the leader and follower arm; it's right there. <coughs> Website, Discord. I'm in the Discord, so if you have any questions, <coughs> excuse me, you can go on the Discord there. And the the Isaac Lab repo is a little bit empty at the moment. It just has uh, some GIFs in there about what's going to be. I actually have Isaac Lab running for 5.0 and, and 2.3. So I will uh, definitely share uh, a bit, let's just say. Can't share it all because it's really just annoying to have to uh, go back and forth and, and help people out. Unfortunately, um, just given the, the time that I have right now. So if, if I have... Uh, end up with a few assistants, which I think are coming soon, then I'll be able to uh, fully describe this just like I had my, my former intern, uh, Donato, also describe what he did last. So, so this, as you can see, the Isaac Lab repo is not, um, not much going on there, but maybe I'll uh, submit a PR for them to pull. <coughs> excuse me, at work, but uh, ROS2, um, you know, they have the bring up, they have move it config, all of that is all done. So I think that's, uh, you know, very cool that they uh, put that all in there. And the, you know, CAN bus spec is all here as well. All of the build materials also available to you. Uh, teleoperation pipeline right here 
and there you go. So that's, um, I, I think I've just taken it one step further, which is to bring it into Isaac Sim uh, and Isaac Lab as well. And I think my next step is to, um, you know, fully, I, I have it running in Isaac Lab already, grabbing things without the camera view. And now my next step is to integrate the cameras, get it to actually pick things up um, just from the cameras only and uh, and fine-tune a policy. I'm currently looking at uh, Groot as my policy, but then I have also plenty of other policies I can I can also take a look at as well while we're going through this. Open VLA and others. <coughs> okay, well I think that's good enough for now. Um, certainly, you know, just to start um, number one on this particular one. Uh, another thing that's happening with this one is going to use Thor Jets and Thor to bring in many different camera views. So I have, I have a teleoperation pipeline that allows you to put a camera behind here and then have a human standing here with no uh, leader arm and uh, do the exact manipulations. And that requires a lot of compute because it's looking at the, the depth camera, following doing the hand pose estimation, all of that um, without uh, having a Vision Pro on or any of that kind of stuff. So it requires a bit of compute just to do that alone. And then you add in all the other telemetry data that, uh, you know, joint states that need to be computed. So that the Thor will be good for that. And the real reason for the Thor is eventually what I want to do is have um, this working autonomously on different tasks. So um, it, it should be able to choose between which task is doing, what step it's on, uh, reason between you know, eventually what's available to it, reason what to do next, um, you know, whether to go into a next step or inform or those kinds of things. And uh, yeah, so that's it. And I'm going to put a little bit of outtake from some of my previous work on this um, that shows the uh, this work in Isaac Lab. So long enough first video, though. Thanks.